Welcome back to How's The View Podcast. My name is Kyle Leary. Today, we're gonna be talking about something you guys might not be thinking about a whole lot, water. But not just water, how is water and maybe even our hot shower steams affecting our health? How is our pets affected by this? And how it's gonna make the perfect cup of coffee. So today, we're talking with Eric from Elite Water Systems. Super excited to have you here today, Eric. Now, I know before we were on set today, you were giving me some crazy stories of what people are doing in their homes right. nowadays. Now, I don't want to give the spoiler on it, so that's later to come. Sure. But with Elite Water Systems, this didn't happen overnight. Right. It wasn't something where Eric sat down a year ago and said, I'm doing this. What led up to this? What, what was the past that led yeah. to this opportunity? That's It's a great question. I get that a lot because I, I, uh, I got my degree in supply chain management and people are like, how did you get up in the water business? Simple. I was working for an elevator company in New Orleans when Hurricane Katrina hit. Wow. And so we got, I got displaced to Baton Rouge. So I'm there for about 30 days, driving back and forth working. And uh, about 45 days after the hurricane, uh, the EPA, the city, and of course uh, FEMA and uh, you know all, all those different uh, uh, organizations said, hey, flip your switch, or sorry, flip your tap on, run it for 30 seconds or 30 minutes, something like that, and you can drink your water. And I was like, there's no way. Like you took a you took a fishbowl essentially. Yeah, you filled it with every liquid, chemical, pharmaceutical, uh, you know, anything that could decay humans, body, so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And they took that water, they pumped it back to the Mississippi River, and then they took all the big stuff out, threw some bleach in there, and said, "Okay, your water meets EPA guidelines. Go ahead and consume it." And I was like, "There's no way." So, uh, upon my displacement, the naval guard actually set up shop in my apartment complex. So my apartment complex was, uh, it was condemned, unfortunately. So, and this was right across the street from the convention center. So anyways, they, uh, they had these massive trucks pumping water out of the Mississippi river and these huge signs on the, on these trucks, they had showers and, and drinking, drinking fountains. And the sign said microbiologically safe water. So I asked the guy, so what does that mean? He goes, well, what that means is uh, this is the safest, cleanest water you could get. He goes, have you ever seen microbiologically safe on your water bill or a bottle of water? I said, no. And so he showed me the equipment and I asked a few questions. I said, how do I get a system? Where does it go? How fast can I get it? And I don't really care how much it costs. Let's, let's do this. Cause I was so, uh, amazed at what was in the water and mm -hmm. what they were taking out. Jeez. So I got very, uh, passionate about, uh, the water industry. So. One year after that uh, encounter, I left my organization in New Orleans. I and I moved to Texas, and I got uh, yeah. I did a twelve months of research, moved to San Antonio. Uh, I was ignorance on fire. Opened up the, the business with, <laughs> with uh, opened up the business with my wife and four walls. I had no idea what I was doing. All I knew is that I could sell these water systems. So I literally started just knocking doors like a door door salesman. Wow. And I apologize for my ignorance. Katrina, what year was that? I, yeah, that I, I'm was, a baby. Yeah, it was August 30th of 05. 05. I was about to say 06. So 05. So that's, it's almost been 20 years. So going back to that, you know, you opened, like you said, with the four doors down there. What, what was your initial thought process? What was like your target? Because you got so passionate about like, sure. how can we take such dirty water as a consumer base and all of a sudden transfer it to be digested sure. in the typical individual was, did you go about it and say, okay, I need to spread the word. I, we, you know, my focus is health things, that nature. I'm just trying to get in. I know you said go knock on doors. Right. Was it when, with that prevalence, did you have a target demographic that you were trying to go after? So ironically, when I got to San Antonio, I remember hearing Tony Robbins speak and Tony said, what's not possible in your business today, but if it were possible would break all the rules, go mm -hmm. do that. So I went and got uh, a membership at the Home Builders Association. I said, man, I'm going to go partner with these builders. Yeah. And being that I was ignorance on fire, I was 26 years old. I had no idea how to network and so forth. I'm coming out of cor corporate America. It looked like I could talk, but I just didn't know what the hell I was talking about at the time. So uh, I went to the builders. I'm like, man, guys, you know, you're building these incredible houses, but the consumers have no idea what they're drinking. So the way I look at water is it's an invisible chemistry, essentially until it comes out of, out of the tap. Even when it comes out of the tap, what's invisible that's in the water are the things that you don't see that are harmful to you. So I thought, hey, how easy is this going to be? I'm going to show the builder a couple of water tests and I'm going to be an option, hopefully. Yeah. Ironically, it took me five years to get our first builder. Uh, and once we got the first builder, we started to almost double our size in business every year after that. What we started to see was just adoption, not just of the program, but we saw adoption in how uh, 
we were bringing value to the consumer experience. And we were helping them understand how to live healthier simply by investing in a water system that is increasing the performance of your home and allowing you to live healthier. So the builders became my target. I didn't get my first builder until 2011 or 12, which is about five years after we started. Wow. Okay. And I have a funny side story I want to share, but because I know a big thing right now is like pH levels, acidic, yeah. acidic levels, um, alkaline water, things of that nature. I remember I was running some nutrition stores and we had this big presentation by some individuals that came off from the mall. Like, can we do a presentation? Sure enough, they did the drop test in the water. What is your perspective on that? Because I was always torn like, all right, is this, you know, the pH levels I understand within the body, the acidic levels, things sure. of that nature. What are your thoughts even just on the acidic levels? You know, I think that first of all, you're, you're just from a, a human consumption standpoint, mm-hmm. your body's always trying to be in balance, right? It's yeah. always trying to be a, a, a seven on the pH scale, right? Mm-hmm. Which is neutral. Acidity obviously is not good uh, it, from a con- con- consumption ex- perspective, especially if it's water. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's usually used as a, almost like a degreaser. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we use uh, acid washes in like, uh, the window industry, like the window manufacturers and so forth, when they're spraying the windows down to, before they, before they uh, leave the facility. But, you know, to raise the pH to an alkaline level, there's been a lot of studies and, and, and uh, a lot of benefits showing that if you can help the body reduce the strain of trying to always be in a neutral state by providing that nutrients and uh, liquids that are, uh, that are going to counter the acidity, there's a lot of health benefits to it. Now, to me, at the end of the day, not all of it is, is sanctioned by the by the Water Quality Association, which is our equivalent of the Home Builders Association. Mm-hmm. Not all of it is sanctioned by by uh, the the larger third parties, uh, mainly because there's there hasn't been enough studies in it. Obviously, drinking pure water that has mineral content, it's fantastic. Got it. You need it. Mm-hmm. You need, and first of all, it tastes good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and secondly, there's massive uh, numbers of studies and benefits of consuming water uh, that's much healthier with mineralization. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So that was just on my side because I, I we had so many presentations. Being in a nutritional store, we had so many alkaline sure. presentations. So that was besides the fact. That's just for my state of mind. <laughs> but going back to it, you know, okay, so you've been in the business for almost 20 years now. Right. 05, open up. How has the water industry changed from back then to now? Has it been pretty stagnant? Like, hey, this is this is our goal to get this sort of quality or what has adapted over the time frame? Yeah, here's the, the industry has adapted to the lack of, standards set forth by, you know, the governing bodies that, that, you know, that be, we haven't had a true update to the water quality, um, act or the clean water act since I think 1990. So the clean water act was essentially, uh, installed in the seventies, 1970s to make water biologically safe. Mm. Right. So basically, uh, the E. coli's, the, all the viruses, the stuff that can really get us sick. You know, if we, if we ingest it, you know, the dirty water is almost like pond water. That stuff needed to be cleaned up. But what they did not regulate uh, were all the chemical contaminations uh, and heavy metal contaminations that we see that are very prevalent today. Uh, PFAS, uh, lead, you know, lead, there's, there's, a, there's a restriction on the amount of lead that could be in the water. But if you read the EPA website, it says no amount of lead is okay to ingest. But the reason why they allow some levels of lead to go through is because these municipalities can't be perfect. Mm. Our tax dollars only cover so much. That's why it's so neat to see the thoughtful home yeah. and what you guys are doing because you're taking the thought out of the consumer's mind of are they living healthy? And, and, they, and they truly are. And I think that's, that's something that we've been very passionate about. So to, to, to really give you the, the, uh, the effect of how the water industry has changed, we used to think having soft water was clean water way back in the day. It's like, oh man, you just you know, get soft water, it's, it's clean water. Now, we're not just worried about how our skin feels. We're worried about what we're ingesting. We're worrying about uh, what what we're making our foods with, our coffee. Mm-hmm. I think spoke about really? what, what our you know what coffees are, uh, is has in it. Even Dr Pepper, Coca Cola, and Starbucks yeah. they actually have a chemical ingredients of what the water's supposed to be like before it touches the coffee grinds or mixes with the syrup. Believe it or not. Wow. Okay. Because you brought up a great point is the way people are living is is drastically different today than what it was you know decades ago. And so have you even seen a difference since COVID? Because it seems like everyone is more subconsciously trying to make this effort of living a healthier life just from a germ standpoint, yeah. you know, our air, our water. Sure. So have you even seen it just change in the last couple of years? Yeah. So I remember watching one of your videos and you indicated, hey, man, in the last 20, 30 years, the the, the, the construction industry really hasn't changed. What's yep. changed is the performance of the home, 
and all the gadgets and so forth. So what's changed for the consumer's mindset, uh, before 2020, the consumer's number one concern with water was hard water. Mm. It's dry skin, spots on the dishes, spots on the shower doors, ground around the toilets, you know, all the mess that they deal with when it comes to hard water. That was the number one concern. Biggest reason why is because 80% of the U.S. is hard water. Not Colorado Springs, or at least some parts of Colorado Springs, yep. but not, not all of them. Uh, that changed. When COVID hit and the same research firm did the, the same study, what we found was is it flip-flopped. Now consumers became uh, 100 of the respondent, 100, sorry, 100 of the respondents said that they were worried about the chemicals, lead. Chemicals being one, lead being two. Wow. So that led to, to us revolutionizing our products. We were already in the midst of making the titanium that, we, that uh, goes into the thoughtful series. But once it, it hit and, and the mindset of the consumer changed, we saw a great opportunity to bring some innovation to the builders to say, hey, check this product out. Your consumers are going to get better than bottled water quality. It's worry-free. And the vessel has a lifetime warranty. We could innovate that filter. Here's, here's the cool part. We have scientists in uh, Hickory, North Carolina. We have an innovation center there. And all these guys do, they're just making formulas, right? That's <laughs> a bunch of smart, that, smarter people than us over there doing their stuff. They're just making formulas. It's crazy. So what they have access to are is data that we don't have. So they know when chemicals are coming out that, that uh, aren't yet, uh, uh, you know, they're not yet emerged to the public eye. Yeah. So what we get from them is the ability to create a new product that answers the problems of tomorrow. So I tell consumers mm -hmm. is this, our products are not designed to solve the problems of today. They're designed to solve the problems of tomorrow, today. Wow. And that sets the consumers on a path of real uh, believability and acceptability and, and adoption of the technology. Because used to, you'd have to have a water softener, a carbon tank, a reverse osmosis system at the kitchen sink, and it's a lot of equipment, yeah. right? And from a, from a points perspective, a lot of leak points. From a health perspective, it's like, okay, so I can bathe in okay water, but I have to drink perfect water. Why not have them both? throughout the entire house, which is yeah. you guys did. Yep, exactly. Because that's what I was leading into in twofold is not only we started doing this in our own personal homes, because we, we sat back and we said, okay, launching of our Thoughtful Home series that, yep. that you stated just a minute ago, you know, our mission was to be innovative and you hit a spot on solving the problems of tomorrow today, you know? And so we sat there, we said, okay, we, we look at different industries because it seems like home building is always lagging behind a lot of these other right. innovative industries like vehicles, like phones, technology, uh, all those different areas. So we said, why don't we start advancing home building? And that's where the Thoughtful Home Series was born. But it's, it's a multifaceted thing. It's not just, oh, okay, hey, we're going to put more insulation. We're going to do this inside the home. A, it's how you build it. B, it's our efforts every single day, our processes and procedures. Right. But then not even the tech, but then also how it lives. And that's where a lot of the air and water quality right. in our perspective came into. And we even, like you said, we were the first ones to test it within my family's right. personal homes. They said, okay, before we put this into the consumer's hands, let's test it out, see if it's sure. something that that we actually notice a difference and, and things of that nature. And it's been astounding. You know, we, we set up these little qualities for water and air in our home to see how they change. And I was like, okay. Who knows? These these meters could be just saying, hey, we have good air. Not even joking. A lot of these measurements that we have, and I'll just use the air, for instance, because it's in my kitchen. But like whenever I just go to grill something, or I say grill, but I put something on a skillet inside the kitchen, all of a sudden those measures go up to right. show how bad the air quality and, and things of those nature. Right. And people just don't realize how many exterior factors there are when it affects our water and our air. Consumers activity, indoor activity. There's no regulation for the amount of pollution that we can create in our, in our, in our indoor environments, right? So if uh, what gets measured gets done. So if we can put a measuring stick there to measure the performance of the products and help the consumers visibly see that, they're always going to have peace of mind that they're walking into health at all times. They're breathing healthy. They're, they're, they're drinking healthy. The crazy part about the indoor environment is indoor air quality is, uh, is affected so much by the kind of water quality we have. Huh. Check this out. So you have to have a certain amount of chlorine or some sort of disinfecting product in the water that uh, disinfects the water, makes it microbiologically safe, like we talked about, before it gets to the house. The problem is, is that uh, one of the reasons why we fill up our pools so much is because the chlorine evaporates, the water is evaporating, but the chlorine evaporates at a much lower level mm. than water. So it'll actually evaporate at room temperature. So when you're heating your water in your water heater or your tankless water heater, 
and you and the water comes out of the out of the uh, the shower head and you see all the steam. Well, I, I ask somebody, you know, what's the steam in the shower? They're always just say, well, it's the water. It's the water evaporating. Not necessarily. It's some combustion of the water, but if it was actually the water uh, steaming at that level, you'd burn to death because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit yep. or 100 degrees Celsius, right? So what you're seeing is you're seeing the chlorinated chemicals, the disinfecting chemicals, the VOCs, volatile organic compounds that are evaporating them at a much lower level. So what ends up happening is you end up getting a chemical cocktail of oh gosh of chlorinated air yeah. in your in your shower, and of course you're not showering with the mask on. You can actually absorb through your nasal cavity, through your skin, uh, as much chlorine in a 20 minute shower as you could drinking a glass of water from a swimming pool. Ugh. <laughs> It, it's 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 insane. That's a that's a fact. The University of Texas did a study on that about uh, ten years ago. Wow. And see, a lot of individuals don't. I going into that conversation right there, I didn't even recognize it. You know, I was just talking about air purification because that was one yeah. of the our targets on top of water. I didn't even realize. I kept going back to my grilling and and burning my steaks on the frying pan, affecting the air quality. But it even goes down to your showers and your water. It does. So even this, right? If you just go back to air for just a second, you know the the beauty of the uh, air diagnostic tool is to register uh, air quality events and then remediate the challenge immediately by sending the signal to, to the HVAC system so the air turns on uh, and it flows through the Super V, essentially calibrating the house to, to a healthy level. So we, you know, water is much different because it's much more difficult to filter than, than air. Uh, it, it, it takes a lot of different types of technologies wrapped in the one to make it happen, but we try to answer those problems, you know, immediately, especially with the titanium. Now, Here's, here's one of the, the things that people don't realize is that uh, water in and of itself, outside of just creating a, a, a healthier environment, water in and of itself also has a lot of, um, it creates a lot of challenges with people's uh, asthmatic issues. If they, ha if they have them, it creates issues with uh, uh, breathing. It creates issues with your upper respiratory, lower respiratory. So this is pretty neat right here. The customer's, uh, will create this indoor air pollution just by simple activity, cooking, cleaning, whatever the case may be. Yep. All that stuff, you know, uh, uh, evaporates. Well, one of the things consumers don't realize, and this is what I love about view homes. One of the things that customers don't realize is if they live in a dry environment and they have a humidifier, what is feeding the humidifier? Oh gosh. You're going to say this, and my wife has a humidifier in every single one of our rooms in our kids' bedrooms, so... But you've got a water system. That is true. Right? Yep. So, when we did uh, our very first titanium install, and I had, and we had the Super V installs, well, I had my plumbers and HVAC guys here at the same time, and I could not understand why the why the air quality monitor was registering very high on the ball to organic compound levels, which is the chemicals. Could not figure it out. I'm like, what, what was going on? Like, I, this is not supposed to happen. Turns out, I realized that the humidifier was not tied into the titanium. So it was just getting straight tap water to the humidifier. So once we switched to titanium, the volatile organic compounds went down tremendously. So that was an accident of research in and of itself. So I was able to bring this back to view and show them, look, we're not just going to give consumers clean water and clean air. We're also going to help the, the humidity levels have a much greater level of health in those little tiny particles that spew out the consumers are, are breathing because essentially it's all chemicals right yeah. so but we had to take out the leads the the, the vocs all the bacteria, the sediments and all that mess uh from the water so now what goes to the humidifiers especially in the thoughtful homes is nothing but pristine mist so mm. now your house is even more calibrated than it was before Jeez. okay <laughs> dude i mean it's, it's just it's boggling my mind even though i have these things going into this depth I, I didn't even know a lot of these. So if I was someone sitting back today, because we talk a lot about the Thoughtful Home right. series, the way we were trying to build something healthier for the individual. Sure. But what if the individual, they don't have access or they're not in an area with view homes in the Thoughtful he thoughtful Home series, is it still possible to have these items introduced in their home? 100%. Okay. So every home can be retrofitted because uh, the footprint's very, it's very small for a product, but they're very powerful. Uh, so in, in all of your design centers as well, if the consumers choose not to, uh, buy a thoughtful home or if they, or they just don't have the access to, to it, they can choose these options for their current floor plan mm. and they can even do it when the house is completed. So send it, send me the house is completed. It's a spec home. Uh, realtor comes up with the, the, the potential buyer and they open up the options. 
those are easy change orders because we're not changing the structure of the house. Got it. Not, not repainting. We're not doing ca cabinets or, or uh, you know, or countertops. We're simply entering uh, and establishing a water treatment system and an air treatment system for the consumer. And that literally, we can retrofit a house in about two hours. Wow. It's that easy. That easy. Okay. So when you're talking about retrofitting houses, just because, you know, we have to talk about the stories that you were telling me right, <laughs> right before all this, you know, you have some crazy, crazy stories, what people are doing with water yeah. and the extravagant lifestyles and also weird lifestyles that we're, we're seeing with individuals. What, what is something that stands out to you here recently that someone has done with their water? They are just like, what is, what is going on? So we talked about the alkaline water a little earlier, Yep. reverse osmosis water, you know, ultra pure water. So there is a, uh, a very large house in San Antonio and the consumer is extremely cautious of what their animals consume. And so we are running a purified water line to the doggy pot filler in the doggy. No pot. way. Yes. So, and the cool part is, is that there's a, uh, there is a, a, a weight, a weight switch there. So when the water levels go, goes down, it registers the weight and then it turns the spout on. Pretty neat. Now here's the thing though. You have to have a little bit of calcium, magnesium, a little bit of remineralization in the water because reverse osmosis water in its most purest form is very aggressive. It, mm. it, it's, it's very soluble. So water in its, its most natural state is soluble. It'll absorb everything it touches. So the reason why we, you, you add minerals back to water, and you see this in bottled water, right? It says mm -hmm. enhanced with minerals. Minerals add taste, but minerals also uh, reduce, actually, well, they increase the, the alkalinity, but they reduce the aggressiveness of the water. So if water sits sit in the plastic bottle, and uh, you open it, you drink it, you can taste the, the plastic. You're actually drinking the plastic. So they add minerals to it to slow down the potential leach. Gotcha. All bottled water has a expiration date. And the reason why is because over time, that, if that water sits long enough, it's going to absorb the- um, The plastic with the, it. The, the plastics. But that's one crazy. We have um, another customer who is a coffee espresso aficionado. She can tell- when she's got different coffee, she knows when it's made with tap water versus soft water. Oh my gosh. So we had to run a specialty uh, reverse osmosis system in her house directly to that $12,000 espresso machine. This lady said she wanted to have uh, better than Starbucks coffee in her, in, her, in her home. So we gave it to her. Now, the crazy part is that it wasn't just, it wasn't just the espresso machine itself. It's the kind of water. We know uh, to the, uh, to the chemical element, exactly what needs to be in that water, the quality of water before it gets to the espresso machine, because the coffee grind size, mm -hmm. the pressure of the espresso machine and the kind of water you feed it all table, the kind of flavor you get from, uh, the coffee. That's anything really. Okay, that's insane. Now, the funny thing is, I think the second part of that story were these same individuals that were very passionate about water, twelve, fifteen thousand $15,000 espresso machine they had a little tiny pool. Yeah. It didn't match up to the massive home. So it's like they, they had the interior water figured out. It was the exterior water we're, we're still working on. Still working on, but they're, uh, they have a bar, uh, outdoor bar near the pool. Not in the pool. If it was my house, I'd have been in the hey, pool, right? <laughs> amen. <laughs> so, but uh, in the outdoor bar, they have water lines running there as well. They can access pure water. Uh, the homeowner himself actually has a spout that's going to go on his desk mm. in his office. So he can just go get some water. Jeez. Oh, there's some crazy stuff. But here's the thing, here's the thing though. No. If you think about what, what these consumers desire, it's exactly what you're, what you're pretty much giving your clients in a thoughtful home or if the consumer decides to upgrade the titanium. That titanium is the highest rated single whole house water filter on the market. We have the science, we have the certifications. And it was built by the guys who consult the EPA on their filtration. Mm. So we brought this to you guys uh, first. And uh, if I can just brag on you guys for just a second, you're the- You do it. So View Homes is the first to adopt that whole house level of filtration uh, in the country. Wow. And it's, uh, we've, we've gotten a lot of rave reviews, not just from the, from the consumers, but the builders, the operation of the home. You have less challenges with your, your, all your uh, water fixtures, all your plumbing. Uh, your dishwasher is lasting 50% longer. Your, mm -hmm. your water heater is 50% longer. Your plumbing is 50% longer. And uh, even your clothes, believe it or not, uh, will last 30% mm. longer yep. just because you got rid of the, the chemicals and the metals and the uh, mineral content. Talking about water, I'm just used to drinking from a hose in the football <laughs> days. <laughs> a little bit different. That might be because, yeah, that might have caused something you know, to be wrong with this. You know, I was just drinking. Exactly. 
Yeah, this plan's pretty good. So attribute all my issues to that. Yeah. Got it. Yes. So absolutely. with that being said, you know, hopping off water just slightly, yep. you know, you, you talked about starting all of this back in 2005 after Katrina hit right. and things of that nature. And, and you listening to Tony Robbins and being motivated, overzealous to get out into the field and get this started. So from an entrepreneur mindset and leadership mindset, if someone was looking to start something today, because I see the passion that right. you have behind it. Because first and foremost, if you're going to go create something, you have to be passionate about it. W- what would be some sort of advice you would give someone looking to start some sort of business that they're passionate about today? You know, I think, you know, if there's if there's a, a large enough why, the how will take care of itself. I had mm-hmm. no idea how I was going to last in business. I had no idea how to manage people, how to lead people. All I knew is that I had a product that people needed and it was something I felt very noble about. So if what you're doing can improve people's lives and you know you're gonna you're gonna change the trajectory of their health or their well being or whatever the case may be, then my advice is do all you can. There's not a script for it. There's not anything that I there's not a smoking gun or or you know, magic beans that I can give you to say, hey, this will make it work. But I will say this grit, hard work, resiliency fire just you take those elements you're going to figure out how to get your product to enough people to impact them enough to create a business for me i was lucky that i grew up with a, 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 as the youngest of my family all my family members are, are, are entrepreneurs they, my parents have had a restaurant for 37 years in uh, in texas you know my other brothers are in oil and uh gas and and uh, sister as well so water just kind of fell into my you know my lap and I, I didn't know what I didn't know. I started the business in 2007 in the middle of a recession. I was ignorance on fire. I love it. But I did not want to quit even when th- times got tough because I knew I was making a difference. So I think just for, for those folks that have a product line or a solution that's going to make people's lives better, easier, and help them save money and provide a greater well-being, by all means, do go what you got to go for it. That's awesome. Go for that's it. Awesome. And lean on books. Lean on other entrepreneurs for inspiration. They're not going to do it for you. But what they will do is help you stay motivated, be inspired. And I think the, the the greatest test of character for any business is how long they've been in business. Because if you've been in business longer than, than, than uh, let's say, five, 10 years, you overcome a lot. Oh, yeah. You overcome a lot. Yeah. 20, 30 years, I mean, you overcome multiple recessions, multiple administrations, multiple different uh, environmental challenges and so forth. And I think that's where... Uh, I could touch on this for just a second. Absolutely. I think this is where the rubber hits the road for anybody that's investing in a home. That's your sanctuary. That's where you live. That's your comfort zone. That's where you uh, you take care of your children. That's where you go and, and relax. Why not? If you're going to make the largest investment of your life, why not have it healthy? And that's your home. And why not do it right? And do it right. Yes. Exactly. Man, that's freaking awesome. All right. Being, being the water expert, if I was walking into a store today and I'm going to buy a bottled water, which one do I go with? <laughs> That's a good question, man. Put me on the spot. I know. I would, uh, you need to buy water with uh, bottles that have a thicker plastic. Okay. So your smart waters uh, are one. But uh, if, you want, if you're going for, for purity, purity, Dasani. Really? Yeah. Okay. Dasani. Okay. I like it. That's actually my preferred one. I know others have different thoughts about that. I'm not going to say any names, but no. Okay. Sweet. So guys, that's it with How's the View podcast. We got Eric with Elite Water Systems. Eric, thank you so much for tuning in today. You can find this podcast over on your local podcast stations, whether that's Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you'll be able to find this one. Again, Eric, thank you so much today, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.